What makes you... 1965 with go-karts, and I can get paid for doing it, you know, enough to, to live on, and it's, I just love it. I just love it. I just love every bit of it. And it could be like a number of other uh, professional or semi-professional sports. I'm a little more mature travel, too. I certainly enjoy the competition and the camaraderie with the with the other drivers. And, uh, uh, something I've always wanted to do, and uh, I don't know of uh, anything else I'd be any good at. You are seeing this raceway from the driver's point of view. View that up to now has been experienced by only a handful of persons every year. Just a few hundred drivers who can truly be called a breed apart. For their quick thinking, fast acting, instinctive reactions for both speed and for safety. For this is Super V, unknown until a few short years ago, a category and competition of auto racing that is drawing the new and more competitive drivers who one day could write the biggest racing headlines of them all. Automobile race, America's largest non-betting spectator sport. A thrilling blend of man's many dreams and desires. A thrill-a-minute sport that combines cars and tracks and drivers and fans in a way that is ever-changing but always exciting. Racing machines have certainly changed since this car set track records more than 50 years ago. Today, Super Vs are one of the hottest and most challenging cars of them all because they open the door to big time racing. They provide the proving ground and the wealth of experience so essential if the driver is to move up to the big Indy car competition. Some of them, like Tom Bagley, race for a living. Howdy Holmes also makes racing his full-time career. And Bill Palmer is still another full-time racer. Jim George has just made the transition from insurance executive to full-time racing driver. Stuart Moore, not only a driver, but a mechanic as well, combines both his loves into this one sport. But then there's Tom Thompson. Off the track, he's a financial systems analyst. Also in finance, Noel Bennett is an investor. Eddie Miller, a contractor. Herm Johnson heads his own custom painting firm. Bob Lazier owns a ski lodge. Bill Alsop operates a company that constructs and installs ski lifts. But career drivers or weekend racers, they all have one thing in common. In these days of mass production, of plastic sameness, of fitting a mold, these are individuals who refuse to fit the mold. Racing drivers are a breed apart. We're behind the scenes in the paddock, the get ready area for any race. The place where the cars are lined up, checked out, fussed over, lovingly coaxed into top condition. On the track itself, it's just one man and his machine. But what gets him on the track is the teamwork of a tightly knit group, the driver, his mechanics, and often members of the family. With future generations of racers already understudying their parents. They're always ready to share their views too, to talk about the things uppermost in their minds, racing and cars. What is it that makes a sports car a Super V? Dick Kramer is asking the question. He's a former racing driver and also president of the Montgomery Ward Auto Club, which sponsors two of the Super Vs in competition. It's primarily a designation that's created within SCCA for uh, a formula car with a lot of Volkswagen components in it, standard Volkswagen components that are modified for racing. The car is a very small, very high-powered car with a Volkswagen engine. 
and there isn't very much to the car other than the suspension and the engine. Super V is an open-wheel racing car, uh, similar to an Indianapolis car that a lot of Americans are familiar with. Uh, they're powered, powered by a Volkswagen engine, uh, put out about 160 horsepower, top speed's about the 160 mile an hour range. The uh, open of the chassis to a monocoque and, you know, the wings and different things like that is what makes it different from a Formula V and also being open wheel would make it different from a sports car. Well, just that they're super fun, I guess. The, uh, the motor is uh, came from the early uh, square back type four um, uh, Volkswagens, and although they're highly modified now, they start out life that way. And uh, to differentiate them from uh, regular Formula V, which uses the type one motor, uh, they call it Super V. Well, if they uh, have VW engines, what makes the difference in performance between the cars, Bob? Well, primarily just the, the care you take to the detailing of what you do with the engines, what you do with the chassis, and uh, uh, you just massage each little piece to get uh, a little quicker or a car handling a little better. I think it's basically the driver. The driver has to try quite a bit harder because everything is the same. control, so the driver is very important here. That's what we're battling with right now is trying to figure out how we can go faster than anybody else with the same basic car as everybody else has got. Just a lot of little uh, things that take probably a year or two to pick up or maybe even five or six years to pick up. Well, if you try and make it handle better and get the best engine builder you can, and then, uh, then it's pretty much up to the driver. The elements are all there, but it's how you arrange them and how you get the most out of them to uh, uh, get the most horsepower. Howdy, tell us a little about this car. Uh, is this an expensive automobile, uh, race automobile, or is this a, a low cost compared to other racing uh, classes? Well, you're absolutely right. Compared to other racing classes, it is a low cost vehicle. As the car sits right now, or if one would want to go out and buy a new one, you'd, uh, you'd have to invest about $20,000 to have a car, two spare motors, and a, and a few extra wheels so that you could you'd have enough equipment to be competitive. When Super V first became a professional racing series in the early 1970s, they raced only on road courses. But now, built as many Indy cars, they are competing on oval tracks as well. They race at Trenton in New Jersey, at Lexington's Mid-Ohio Circuit, at Seattle, at Milwaukee, at many courses, such as Nelson's Ledges in Ohio, Watkins Glen in New York, Elkhart Lake, a sport park, a score of tracks in both the United States and Canada. How does that differ in, in, in so far as your driving uh, uh, style, Jim? Smoothness really counts uh, on an oval. You have to be uh, as precise as possible because even the smallest change in direction scrubs off an enormous amount of speed here on an oval. There's other things to consider, too. In oval racing, uh, you don't do as much braking and you don't do any shifting. How about the young people who are considering entering racing as amateurs? Is this a good class of car for them? Are there a lot of these cars around and are there the best? Because you have an amateur division, you have a professional division, and there's enough cars. I would, I would venture to say that there's probably four to 600 Super Vs in the country. So you, it gives one, uh, someone who's new and starting out, you have enough horsepower in these cars to get an idea of what a, what a real race car is like. It's a pretty good entry point. I think there are uh, some smaller classes in the SCCA or the Sports Car Club of America that might be a little bit more economical and, and give you the same experience. It depends on the individual, though. If you're willing to take your time and not try to go out and win the first race, there's certainly uh, nothing wrong with starting professionally and running a Super V. I have to think that it's probably the best thing that's happened to uh, young drivers' racing careers here in the States ever. Uh, it allows you to get into uh, big league racing, race in front of good crowds, and uh, it also gives you the experience to race in front of the big teams. Uh, what's more, USAC has never really been able to have uh, super speedway experience for young drivers. They'd have to go directly from midget cars, which don't necessarily apply to the championship division. And now they've got a vehicle where people can kind of test their, test their wings, as it were. Yes, Super V offers a chance to develop and refine the techniques of driving that a man or a woman must have if he or she is to move into the front ranks of all racing. A racing season is a lot of things. It's the fun and excitement of the race itself.
and its long days and nights of demanding behind-the-scenes work. Its thrill, the checkered flag. Its disappointment, the yellow flag. It's the heartbreak of failing to qualify. Perhaps not even being able to leave the track under your own power. But up or down, win or lose, there's one thing for sure. Most will be back to race again and again. Because, like a disease, racing gets into the blood and there's no cure. And racing gets into the blood of the fans as well as the drivers. The racing weekend is something special for the tens of thousands who come to see the action. It's a holiday. It's a family picnic. It's bratwurst and beer. It's soda pop and cotton candy. And occasionally, it's also rain. But rain, like this heavy drizzle in Seattle, can't dampen the enthusiasm of the true race fan. In fact, it adds to the thrill and excitement. A race brings out fans from all over the United States and Canada. And it attracts its share of celebrities, too. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to start the race in a few moments, and Miss Zsa Gabor is going to give the command to these handsome young drivers. Gentlemen, start your engines. This is a tense moment in any race, as they follow the pace car, weaving back and forth, warm up tires, and check handling. But this event, like all of them, really started the day before, during the time trial to determine the lucky drivers to make it to the main event. Because not everyone who wants to compete is fast enough. There must be a number of uh, many Indy cars around here. Uh, will they all race tomorrow, or is there a limit? Well, uh, at, at every type of track, be it an oval track or a road, ra road racing course, excuse me, they have X number of cars are allowed per mile. At this track, they will allow 22. It's a mile long track. They'll allow 22 cars to start. There are, however, 37 cars entered. There are the lucky ones out there right now. Yes, these racing cars really burn up the track. Do you think the popular concept about racing being dangerous is accurate? It's dangerous, but so is driving on the freeway. With today's uh, cars and the uh, equipment that we have, the safety equipment, the design of the cars, the uh, clothes we wear, and, and after all, the ultimate safety device is the driver himself. I guess one of the old adages is that if you're gonna finish first, first you have to finish. So there's a lot of attention paid to detail. Uh, everyone who's racing wants to be on the track that day. Uh, so everybody is concentrating 100% on what they're doing. Uh, which is different than, let's say, driving down the freeway where someone may, his mind may wander and maybe thinking about something else. Safety is the biggest factor that all of the sanctioning bodies in uh, uh, international road racing are concerned with. Uh, they work with catch fences in case the cars go off. We have uh, the type of construction within the race cars is oriented 100% towards safety. The weight limits are all adequate enough so that you can put in the safety equipment. So. I think it may be a touch dangerous, but I think it's really offset with a conscientious effort toward safety. Well, when you get a car ready for a race, I'm sure you're concerned, too, about speed. But what comes first, speed or safety? Oh, without any question, safety. You, you, in order to win a race, you have to finish the race, okay? And you, it has to be a safe car to do that. I'd say safety is very, very important. Again, just a safe car has a lot better chance of finishing, so safety is pretty high on my list. I think I'd honestly have to say speed, um, but but if the car isn't safe, then you don't feel like going fast. The two go together, I think, because uh, a, a great deal of going fast in a race car has to do with the driver's confidence. The longer you know these drivers, the more you talk about them and see them in action, the more you're aware of their strong emphasis upon one guiding principle, upon importance of safety safety in car design, safety in driving, safety off the track as well as on. And the place where it all pays off is here, 
on the day of the race. Today, we're in the rolling hills of mid-Ohio at Lexington. The crowd gathers, and the excitement mounts. For the fans, it is getting the best possible vantage point, perhaps a favorite corner, to capture every bit of action and excitement. For the mechanics, it's being sure they hear that certain sweet, reassuring sound of a finely tuned engine. For the drivers, it's fighting tension, psyching themselves up for the moment the starting flag drops. And no car can go out on the track unless it first passes a rigid technical and safety inspection by race officials, an inspection that is repeated on the three top placing cars after the race has ended to make sure they have adhered to all specifications. We are watching SCCA Professional Racing Technical Administrator John Tamanis inspect Jim George's car. Front suspension looks good. No play in the wheel bearings. Brake level, brake fluid level is good. Good fitting gas cap. Throttle springs look good. Rear suspension looks good. Got the caliper bolt safety wired up. That looks real good. Okay. I think we're okay for this event. We give you a tech sticker. Mid-Ohio Super V race. Attention all Super V drivers. Drivers meeting in the pit area in 10 minutes. This meeting is a must before every race. Okay, fine. A couple of points to cover. First of all, we've got a very tight first turn and a bridge down there. I've checked the prize money. There'll be no prizes for the first guy under the bridge. So let's have a good, safe start. Stay apart. And let's all get out on the other side. Pole car will bring you up the hill slow. You want a nice, accelerating, gradual accelerating pace coming up the hill. And you'll get the green flag the first time around. A couple of questions. The grass is awful wet. If you get off course, you may slide for a good distance. But when you're off course, you're under control and command of the corner captain. He knows more about where it's safe on that corner than you do. So please put your cars where you're instructed to. Let's have a good, safe race, and we'll see you on the grid at 2 o'clock. Thank you. Welcome to the Robert Bosch Super V Gold Cup race. 25 laps, totaling 60 miles. The crowd that has gathered all around the scene in 2.4 mile track now numbers 25,000, all avid racing fans. And all eyes are on the Super V as they follow the pace car around the track. Green flag, here come the Super V. Car 61, Herm Johnson jumps from the second row position to take the lead. Bob Lazier, car two, is right on his heel. Roger Bighouse is third. Harry McDonald, fourth. Billy McConnell is fifth, and Tom Bagley, sixth. 34 cars in the running. Now, as they start the second lap, the order is Johnson, Lazier, Bighouse, and McDonald. Car three, Ted Field is starting to smoke. Lap three, and we have a new leader. Bob Lazier passes Herm Johnson as they race into turn seven. Meanwhile, Tom Bagley is moving up as everyone expected. He has now jumped from sixth position to third, right behind Lazier and Johnson. McDonald is still in fourth place. Stuart Moore has moved up to fifth, Big House is in sixth, and Phil Scott lies seventh. Bagley is still in third as the leaders pull away from the pack. Big House. Car 18 moves up to fifth position while McDonald hangs in there in fourth. Bob Lazier from Vail, Colorado continues to lead. Herm Johnson, still running second, is starting to smoke. Tom Bagley, still behind the leaders, is running third and still holding off Big House, who's in fourth. McDonald fifth and Billy McConnell sixth.
now lap 12 of 25 laps, almost halfway through this 60-mile race. 16, Billy McConnell and 10, Bennett make contact at Station 8, and Bennett hits the guardrail. It's a bad break, but both drivers are okay. The miscues bring out a yellow. And here, Tommy Thompson and Jerry Brozolo hold position, as do all the drivers responding to the yellow flag. Green flag again, and car two, Bob Lazier continues to pull away to stretch his lead. And now, Herm Johnson is really smoking out there. Tom Bagley is coming up fast, and he's worth watching. Tom chalked up the highest qualifying speed here on the track yesterday, 92.21 miles an hour. Herm Johnson clocked up 91.82, and Lazier 91.43. Close. It's the black flag in the pits for car 61. Herm Johnson, who's had that smoking problem almost from the start. Uh-oh, that's Tommy Thompson losing it on the carousel. Corner 15. But he cuts across the pit road, and he's back on the track. Tommy makes a great recovery. He loses only a few seconds. But of course, in this type of racing, every second is crucial. Lazier is beginning to lap the slower cars. Right now, passing number 45, Bill Kruger. Uh-oh, Big House appears to be blocking Peter Moody. That's not sporting, you know. If he continues that, he could be in trouble. It's the 19th lap, and Lazier has now built a five and a half second lead over Bagley. This race was expected to be a close one between these two cars, and that's what it's turning out to be. You can see that Bagley, in car number one, is using all his skill and determination to whittle away Lazier's lead. And behind Lazier and Bagley come Roger Bighouse in third and Peter Moody in fourth. Bill Scott is fifth. On the backstretch, Lazier still hangs onto his lead, but Bagley continues to nibble at his heels. Both now way ahead of the pack. The crowd here today is really getting its money for it. The competition is brutal. 34 men fighting it out. Dog eat dog, all of them with a single goal, to be number one at the checkered flag. Lazier and Bagley still first and second. And behind them, Roger Bighouse, Peter Moody, and Billy Scott jockey for position. Rosalo and Big House rub wheels as they round corner eight. Could that be the result of blocking? These Super Vs are really eating up the track out there, probably doing 120 and more on the straightaway. On a track like this, every corner, every turn means a new challenge and demands the utmost in safety and skill from every driver. Only three laps left, and the excitement among the fans is mounting as they watch two men who have been leaders in the season, Bagley and Lizzie, battle it out for number one. Lazier continues to hold the lead, but now it looks as though Bagley is starting to gain. Here come the rest of the pack, around corner 15, way behind the two leaders. Last lap, ladies and gentlemen, and Bagley is moving up fast, pushing with every ounce of power. Can he overtake Lazier? And this crowd of 25,000 is getting the action they came here to see. Checkered flag, Lazier comes in first, just five seconds ahead of Bagley to win this mid-Ohio race and build up precious points to add to his score in this year's Gold Cup competition. Mid-Ohio, Bob Lazier uncorks the bubbly. In 
Milwaukee, Noel Bennett collects the winner's due. Trent, Tom Bagley takes the cup. Another day, on another track, the winner might be George. Or Holmes. Or Miller. Or any one of the other new young giants of race. But no matter how tough the fight, no matter how fierce the competition, there is one element that is foremost in all of their minds. Jim George puts it into words. I want to drive safely, and I hope you do too.